12 fillies lined up, net off. Clever and cool, slow to gather stride. And this is the group one, Coolmore to Medica, just to find matron stakes, is over a mile, goes in prominent with Prosperous Voyage attended by Zarinsk and Just Beautiful in between horses. Then comes Olivia Meralda and Tahira. The star filly in the green and red jacket as they sort themselves out with less than six furlongs to go. And it's goes in just in front under Lee Roach, closely followed by Just Beautiful, who is representing last year's winning formula, Billy Lee and Paddy Toomey, disputing the third, Zarinsk and Prosperous Voyage, followed by Tahira and Olivia Meralda, jumbling next with Rogue Millennium, Meditate, followed by Ocean Jewel, Clever and Cool relegates to the back of the field, Cadu Bell. They've passed the halfway stage in the first group one of the festival, the Coolmore America Justify Matron Stakes. They're stacking up. It's Gozen in the lead by length to Just Beautiful, then Zerinsk. On the inside is Prosperous Voyage, being followed on the incline for the home straight by the nose bandit Tahira, pushed along as Olivia Meralda and then Jumbly. As they turn into the straight, a quarter of a mile to run, and Just Beautiful comes to take Gozen. But poised on the outside is Tahira. Zerinsk is battling on in between horses, followed by Prosperous Voyage. Running on his rogue millennium, just beautiful chase by Tahira. Tahira on the stand side draws level with just beautiful dead away from rogue millennium. And it's Tahira who leads deep in the closing stages, is going to win her fourth career group one in the matron for Chris Hayes and Dermot Weld as Chris Miles for the cameras. Rogue millennium and just beautiful followed in second and third. Chris, well done. Thanks, yeah. Would you believe she was actually drawn in the same stall as Lacalina? Um, but I was going through the replays the other day. Look, you're sick of me talking about her. She's just a different class. It felt like slow motion going into the turn. I was conscious not to go down the fence and get boxed in. Kept it nice and smooth and her angled out at the top of the straight. What I loved today, and it was the first time I really saw it, was when she parked... I did have lows left because mm. when they came to me after the line again and she pulled herself up, she took off down to the mile and one. So a step up and trip isn't going to be an issue anyway. Mm. And the key to her is not probably getting to front too soon. You're buying your time once you got in the clear. You were no rush to go to the front, but again, when she gets there, just does enough. Yeah, I, I said it the other day in an interview. She's just having fun. She's having some crack going down at halfway when I just had to edge my way out a little bit just as we came into the dip to straighten up. And she's loving it. like. She thinks she's 16 too. She powers and bursts her way through for you. And look, I hope she stays in training next year because I think she will be even better when she goes up in training. Mm. And uh, talk us through her physical progression from Ryle Ascot. I uh, touched it really well in the ring, red hood on. She obviously had a good bit of time between runs. Yeah, I, I don't know. She's put on a, a good few kilos. Pat, I heard the Pat, Pat and the boss talking about it during the week. Look, she, she feels like she's wider in front she's got a bigger back end on her but like just looking at the replay there like she she loved me giving her a kick out of the gates today we decided to ride her closer to the pace today from where she was drawn and she loved getting a kick and getting right up on the heels and tanking because that's how she rides in all her work and she's just having fun you had a pace map in your head going out did the race pan out that way out of the gates yeah definitely yeah um i thought i was actually surprised to see lee roach in front i thought it'd be Billy and Frankie, um, Lee was going a nice, a, a nice gallop. I was able to slot in behind. I saw Colin just in front of me. More or less, the only one that was a bit of a shock was Gozen, but I suppose from the draw, the kick to get a posse, and maybe she'd done too much. Really interesting match to trip. Of course, she's by Siuni, but her half-sister, Tanarwa, was a winner over a mile and a half, mile and a quarter. The trip you mentioned in the future, perhaps. Yeah, I think she... I think she'd definitely get a mile and a quarter. Whether, whether she'd actually go to the mile and a half, I don't know, but... She's in the right camp and I just hope she stays in training next year and I'm still in Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> what does she mean to you? Actually, it means the world to me. Like, I've been calming myself down uh, with, with my celebrations, but I couldn't contain it any, any longer. That's pretty tame for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was younger, it was a bit wilder, but no, I, I, look, it's just a release. She, she's a very special filly. She doesn't excite you at home and you, uh, maybe that little bit of doubt when you're going in on is she as well as as you'd be hoping, but she went down, I was back around her tail, and as I said, she, she was loving me, giving her the little kick out of the stalls. She does, she means the world to me, and I don't know, would, I, would you find another one like her? Hard to find one like that. 
Yeah, look, I, I'll, I'll take her while I have her, and as I said, I hope I'm in Rosewell next year, and so is she. <laughs> I'll ask her with that. Well done again. Thanks. <laughs> Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.